So, I.O. games. We've all spent a good amount of our time in the old days playing them, but what makes them so satisfying to play? I mean, what is the secret ingredient? Is it the lack of a sign-in screen or the fact that you can literally just play them on a browser without downloading an app? Is it their simple but yet fun gameplay? Or the fact that if you lose on game, you won't lose your 10 days of progress. You can just start over. And so that's why today we, well, I am going to attempt to make one from scratch. Why? I don't know, because it's a good opportunity to learn about multiplayer, which I find to be interesting and fun, and a lot of people, including myself, can easily get confused on it. So there's a lot of core concepts when it comes to multiplayer. There's this thing called multiplayer model, which defines how you will be managing the inputs and the actions of the players. There's a peer-to-peer, -peer, which is in the name. Every computer talks to one another directly. There can be an authority player but there is no server. One of the flaws of this method is that if someone has high latency, then that's gonna affect everyone else's experience. And then you have client server, which is the most common method of making a multiplayer game these days. In a client server model, you have a bunch of computers talking to one computer, which is the server and has absolute authority over every player. Spoiler alert, this is the one I'll be using for the game. Unlike the previous method, there's no latency issue because because of one player and the server has the true absolute state of the game so it doesn't matter what you see in your screen the final game is always what's on the server. So with that said, I wanted to make the very first game asset of this multiplayer game and I decided to start with a player sprite and this is what I got so far. I know, it doesn't look like anything yet but trust me, it will turn into something hopefully fun. I'd actually be surprised if this whole thing even remotely becomes fun. Alright, now let's add some animations and it'd be boring if all players looked exactly the same, so I'll make a couple of these. Now let's quit our rage for IO games, how do we actually make computers connect? At the low level, multiplayer is just computers opening little doors called sockets, agreeing on a number and address, and then yelling bytes at each other until the game ends. But no worries, as usual we have a high level API that makes life easier for developers. And it was actually quite simple, just create a peer and give it to the multiplayer API. Now we need to tell this peer whether it's a client or a server, which I'm handling with this blazingly beautiful UI. If we click on the create server, we create a server and vice versa for the client part. But wait a minute, how do we actually send data? That's where these guys come in, the remote procedure calls. Think of them as functions, you know, like any function that you make. They call that function in other peers, aka other computers. They can also pass a parameter with a 2. That's it. This is the way you communicate between peers. A quick example to demonstrate the function of this method is a chat app. So here I have two apps of the same game running on my computer. One of them will be defined as the server and the other one as the client. You can do this from the debug menu in Godot by choosing multiple run instances. Now these two are the exact same app with the same code running on both of them. They basically define an RPC function using the RPC annotation. And then like any other function in GDScript, you define your function name and parameters. Here, since this function is going to be used to receive and send text, I define one parameter for the text of the message. And then I will get the ID of the sender, which you can think of as a way to identify each client and basically use it as a tag and append that text to a text edit box. Now by default, RPC is an authority mode, meaning it can only be called on other peers by the server other clients will not be able to call this method. So let's change that by making it any peer and call local so we can see our own messages too. And finally make it reliable. This will make sure the message will be sent to clients correctly and not get missed on the way. By default this is set to unreliable which is faster but there is a chance that the packet would get lost. Usually used with things like updating the player positions in the game. So now you can see when I click on send both the client and server show the message and they have their own ID. We can do this with as many clients as we want to and we basically got ourselves a group chat. You can make it look better or give each user a name, but we're not here for that. We're here to make an IO game and I refuse to quit until I make one. Now the next step is to spawn players when we create or join a server. But how do we do that, you may ask. Godot actually does it for you. Sort of. You see, I found this node called multiplayer spawner. It's in the name. When you spawn a node from the authority, other players will also spawn it. 
add a given path and a list of selected nodes. This is going to save us some time. Nice. But now the issue is whenever a node gets spawned in the other peers, the position or any other parameter is not copied to other peers. This is not good. We need to find a way to synchronize the position of the players too. And you guessed it, there is another node for this purpose and it's called Multiplayer Synchronizer. And now you can see that all players look the same across all the peers. But we can't move anything, we can only move everything on the server, cause that's the authority. We basically want to make it so that only the peer that owns the player can move its own player. And for that we need to know who owns the specific node. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but trust me, it'll get more complicated. Now we can use the node's name to tell other peers who owns this node. And if a peer owns the node, they can move it. And yeah, make sure you set the authority to the owner too, so they can actually move it. But now because every player has ownership over the position of themselves and multiplayer spawner does not copy position, they just spawn at the world's origin. So I made this RPC that asks the server about its position and the server responds. Now remember, RPCs will call only on the node with the same path and name. So this RPC will run on the other nodes of the same ID. And now we can move. What a great achievement. The only problem now is when we sync positions with the server, we are basically sending our absolute position to it and the server just takes our word for it. If you ask me, that's not very good for security reasons since I can literally just teleport my character and the server will just accept that. So I decided to only send the input of the player to the server and it should handle the player movement and physics only on the server side and then return the position to all clients. This method will introduce lag and is not very optimized unless you did client side predictions, basically locally move the player whenever we press a button, but only do so as an illusion because the actual game state is still on the server side. You should also be prepared to correct player positions if they mismatch. However, for the sake of simplicity, I won't be doing this since this is a simple IO game. But please don't use this method if you have a fast paced game. And now if I try to teleport again, it's not going to work. And so then I decided to add a way to send info like the player color, the direction it's facing, a tag to show who is who, and yeah, we're almost done. I just feel like there is something missing here. I mean, it's not an IO game if we can't shoot anything, right? So let's add that real quick. I began by adding this indicator arrow to show where we are currently aiming and once we are happy with the position, we can click to shoot. And that sends a signal to the server and you guessed it, the server takes care of the rest. And now whenever we shoot at someone, they just get kicked out of the server? I mean, that's all. No really, that's all there is to this game. I mean, we can add obstacles to the level to make it a little bit harder, add a score system or a leaderboard, maybe make us shoot more bullets when we eliminate other players, but that pretty much sums up IO games, I think. Let me know if you want a part 2 of this game or even a simplified tutorial of everything we just went through. And please do consider subscribing as that would literally help me grow my channel and my knowledge about game dev and hopefully yours too. So yeah, thanks for watching and as always, I will see you soon. Hopefully.